So I'm going to talk about Messier 70. Here's a picture of it. It's a globular cluster. Physically, it's quite close to the center of our galaxy. The famous thing about globular clusters is they all look more or less the same. They're all round. But actually, there are subtle differences between them. And in particular, what I wanted to talk about is that it's actually very, very centrally condensed. Although, you know, you can see stars out of quite large radii, the density of stars close to the center gets very high. In fact, we can see that a little better in this picture, which is a sort of a slight zoom in on the center of the galaxy taken with the Hubble Space Telescope. And you can see really, I mean, it, every dot you can see here is a star and they're incredibly closely packed in the middle. And some globular clusters are like this and some aren't. And this is a phenomenon called core collapse that sometimes the center of the uh, cluster collapses and it also has a really wonderful name it's called the gravothermal catastrophe when you think about clusters of stars they behave very much like gas you can think of the stars as the individual atoms kind of moving around they're interacting with each other they can transfer energy between each other but there are some peculiarities some differences between the way that we're used to gases behaving and that's what leads to this gravothermal catastrophe what's different is that the things kind of held together by the pull of gravity and so we've actually got two bits of the energy of the stars to think about. There's the kinetic energy and there's the potential energy. And there's a simple relationship between them, which basically says that the potential energy is equal to minus twice the kinetic energy. This is a thing called the Virial Theorem, the way that it works, at least in a spherical system. This is an exact relationship as long as the thing's held together by its own gravity in equilibrium. And you can see we can now figure out what the total energy of the system is. It's just going to be the sum of those two terms. So we've got the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, which is minus twice the kinetic energy. So when we add those two together, we end up with minus the kinetic energy. So the total energy is negative. That leads to a slightly weird effect. Suppose you had a cluster of stars and you put a little bit of extra energy into it by whatever mechanism. Um, then from this formula here, that means that this quantity would go up e tote would become less negative. Remember, this is negative. In other words, in absolute terms, it would become a smaller number. That means that this quantity would become less positive. So this is saying if you put energy into the system, the kinetic energy, otherwise known as the temperature, goes down. And that's very different from what we're used to in everyday things with gases. In, you know, if you heat something up, if you put energy into it, then you're used to its temperature going up. And that relationship between putting energy in and the change in temperature is a thing called heat capacity. Um, it's basically how much energy you have to put in to get the temperature to go up by one degree. So, so what he's basically saying is that a self-gravitating system like this has a negative heat capacity. Now let's come back to our cluster and let's think of Messier 70 as kind of in two bits. We'll think about the central bit, which is definitely held together by its own gravity. So this is the bit where this virial theorem that we've derived absolutely applies and where we end up with this negative heat capacity. And then further out, you don't have to worry so much about the potential energy term. It's really mostly about the kinetic energy of the individual stars. In the outer part, you have a positive heat capacity. In other words, if you put energy in, then the kinetic energy, the temperature of the stars goes up. So let's think about for a moment if the temperature, the kinetic energy of the inner part, just became a little bit higher. Just for some random process, it just went up by a tiny amount. So now it, its temperature is kind of higher than the bits around it. And we can invoke the laws of thermodynamics that say, actually, if you've got a higher temperature and a lower temperature, then energy will flow from the higher temperature to the lower temperature. So what will happen in that case is now this bit's got a little bit of a higher temperature, higher kinetic energy. That means that the interactions between the stars in this inner part and the outer part will lead to energy flowing from the inner part to the outer part. In other words, we take energy out of this inner part. But because of what we now know, if you take energy out of something because of this negative heat capacity, taking the energy out makes the temperature go up. In other words, you extract the energy, which means that the kinetic energy, the temperature of those stars goes up. In the outer part, the opposite's the case because you have a normal heat capacity there. So now we're transferring energy into there and the, the temperature of this outer part will also go up because that's got a normal heat capacity. You can see there's a real potential for disaster here because if the temperature in the center went up more than the temperature in the outskirts went up, it'll still have a higher temperature than its surroundings. So this process will continue and so the temperature of the center will go up more and the temperature of the outskirts will go up more, which seems magical. It seems like you're breaking some laws of physics, but you really are sort of trading off potential energy with kinetic energy. Because the total energy of the system has to be conserved and we've come up with a mechanism whereby the kinetic energy of everything goes up, the kinetic energy becomes more positive. That means the potential energy has to become more negative. And the way potential energies become more negative is by things becoming more centrally concentrated. So the more centrally concentrated something is, the deeper the potential well is, the stronger the thing is gravitationally held together in the middle, the more poten negative potential energy it has because you'd have to put a lot of energy in to get the stars out. So the net effect of all that is this thing called the gravothermal catastrophe, that actually the whole thing just runs away. It just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And the net effect of that is that the thing becomes more and more centrally concentrated. 
And it looks like Messi A70 is one of the clusters that has undergone this effect. It's hit this instability, this, this gravithermal catastrophe, which has caused its centre to collapse and its outer parts to expand. Roadmap for the astronomers. And what we're looking at here is just one piece of that roadmap. When they're zoomed in on the sky with their telescope, they might be thinking, am I looking at exactly the right place? They can use these roadmaps with all these landmark stars and big ones and shapes that they can recognise to find their way around space. 